Today is October 12th, 2019. We are Sinful Black Entertainment, and this is the Overtime Sports Show. What is good? What is good? What is really, really good? Ladies and gentlemen, this is your boy James, a.k.a. Hollywood J. Black, live in the building once again. It is Saturday night. Some of y'all at the club shaking y'all asses. Some of y'all at home doing a line of the white stuff. Somebody's probably out there shooting a needle, filling themselves with the good old, bad old uh, methamphetamines. But for those of you that are not partaking in the illegal illicit drugs that are illegal in 50 states as a bow. Why are you saying our fan base is at home shooting up methamphetamines? No, I was saying the ones that are actually paying attention to us. Welcome to the Overtime Sports Show. This is Hollywood J Black. That's my man Big Sin over there. You know, we have some of the we have the strangest fan base in the history of fan base them, sir. Between the podcasts and the YouTube and the Facebook Live where everybody randomly just pops on our shit. I love it, though. How's your week been, sir? I heard uh, you've been you've been uh, training Homeland Security or le- learning about Homeland Security. Oh, oh, you're not supposed to. We're not supposed to say that you've been learning about Homeland Security. My bad. It is top secret. Top flight security of the world, Craig. Not just I, Vegas, I, the world. Okay, so I've been busy, and I've been sick <laughs> because here, because here in Las Vegas, Nevada, the temperature likes to go from ninety degrees to sixty-seven in a day. <laughs> just my, just like my life in the bedroom. Oh, 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 oh! I can't say that. Can I? I can't say that. Your, your, um. Yeah, things aside, <laughs> um, I just want to come out and say this right now. People, even people who don't like the New England Patriots and people who are fans of the Patriots have really unrealistic expectations for this team. Would you like oh. me to tell you why? Well, before, I want you to go down that path, but before we do, I have some breaking news, sort of, kind of. Um, so, since we're on the Patriot path, uh, Tom Brady was caught liking a Instagram post from the infamous Antonio Brown with a picture of Wolverine holding a picture of Antonio Brown uh, uh, focusing on Coach Josh McDaniels smiling, you know, saying, wishing that he was back on the Patriots. Uh, Tom Brady was caught liking that Instagram post. Uh, um, again. Tom Brady has no shame. He is going to like what he wants to like. It doesn't really matter. All, this, that. all this is is internet fodder. You know what I'm I saying? Just it, I just thought it was hilarious. But go yeah. ahead. I, I, uh, okay, so the reason I talk about the unrealistic expectations of Patriot fans and Patriot haters is that this point exactly. Oh, the Patriots often struggled against the New York Giants. They had 400 yards of total offense. There was no struggle. The only thing that struggled was the offensive line a little bit. Brady threw a bad pass because Edelman went out instead of in the middle. They weren't on the same page. That's the only thing that got picked. The offensive line gave up that sack for a fumble in the fumble return for a touchdown. But let's be real here. He is 42 years old. He is not going to average 600 yards passing a game. The offense is not going to run the ball 500 times a game. The offense is not going to put up 60 points a game. The defense is outscoring the rest of the AFC East by themselves. Yo, but let's, 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 we got to, some people got to dial this back for a second. Y'all act like Brady has been putting up Manning numbers. Y'all act like Brady's been putting up Marino numbers. They act act like Brady putting up, they act like Brady right now is putting up numbers like Peyton Manning did when he couldn't feel his hand. (laughs) <laughs> I th- this is the whole thing, okay? Like, my thought process regarding Tom Brady is that he's he's an elite quarterback without the elite numbers, but he has the elite records. 
So it's like it's kind of you, you, you think about that. Think about this for a second. He's the most winningest quarterback in, in NFL history. Number two passing yards all time. Yeah, and when that's about to be eclipsed if he plays another year or more. Um, he's not that far off. Uh we have the the like I said, we got the winning percentage. He's never been the type of guy that has impressed anyone with numbers. Nobody's confused Tom Brady for Dan Marino. Nobody's confused Tom Brady uh, for let, let me uh, for I didn't even say Aaron Rodgers because he's not that Aaron Rodgers. I have I have questions about Aaron Rodgers, but that's another story for another day. Nobody's ever confused him for being like a Troy Aikman or um, a Drew Brees. Yeah, no, nobody's ever put him in that. Tom Brady is in a, a path on his own because we see what the difference with the Patriots is between a Matt Castle and a Tom Brady. Okay, so that whole the whole argument about the, uh, the he's a system computer QB all gets thrown out the window. You got to throw that shit out the window automatically off top. It's not even a discussion because we've already seen it, right? We Brady gets his team to the playoffs. Everybody else doesn't. That's it. You know, I mean, I'm at the point. I, I, I'm just saying real quick. I'm at the point, like, because I want to speak on the thing I spoke about with Antonio Brown. And I, and, and I guess lead up to now with these expectations of Brady. I'm at the point to where if this is a Brady's last years, I'd be like, fuck it. Give the man what he wants for the next two, three years and let him see what happens. What the, What's the worst that can happen? What is literally the worst that can happen? That depends on what aspect you're looking at it from. Personnel-wise. Okay, personnel-wise, nothing really. I'm just saying, personnel-wise, if you give him the receivers that he wants or makes the trades for long-term trades that he wants, you know, in, in the short time that you have left of him, because, because at the end of the day, there's nobody in the NFL right now doing it better than him. One way or another, he finds a way to win. If he can't find a way to win it through the air, he gets his team downfield and he'll dive in himself. Or he'll give it to Sony Michelle. Or he'll give it to Rex Burkshead. Or he'll give it to James White. Or he'll give it to somebody that wants the goddamn ball. Who the fuck? I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what should be the fuck out. Like, I kind of get the slack. I get the same kind of slack with these cats right here on top of my head with the Golden State Warriors, right? Like, oh, Steph Curry is is not elite, but he's the greatest three-point shooter probably of this generation over the last few generations, if you really want to go there. Um, the Warriors win regardless. They find a way to win. Did you see the uh, – I mean, last year when they had uh, when they had uh, Kevin Durant, it was either Durant taking over or Steph Curry taking over, Clay Thompson taking over, or Draymond Green taking over. They find a fucking way to win, and that's the, exactly what the Patriots are. They find a way to win. That's what good teams do. I think what's happening is that a lot of people don't understand how good teams operate because maybe they haven't had a good team. Look at the Pittsburgh Steelers. I mean, I mean, Ben Roethlisberger's out. They're relying on Mason Rudolph, who's got his head taken off. And when it, before he got his head taken off, he wasn't doing much better before. Um, so they, they, <laughs> I'm just, so, I'm just saying. That's all. I, I know. I know. I know. What I want people to just realize about this Patriots team, and okay, so 2001, 2003, 2004, the Patriots team was all about the defense. Yep. 2011, 12, 14, you know, this recent one run run, it has been about the offense. This Patriots team in particular that we are seeing here in 2019 – the 6-0 squad is about the defense. This defense is fucking phenomenal. And this is, but it's the same defense that, that that came along towards the end of last year after the bad November that they had. Mm -hmm. You know how bad November was last year for New England. The same shit. The, the defense finally came on when they were supposed to. They shut down Patrick Mahomes twice. Um, they completely shut down the Rams' offense when he got to the Super Bowl. Uh, they shut down the Texans. It didn't matter who they put in front of them. And they just added a couple of pieces. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't know what more people want out of them. Like, I mean, everybody's a critic. That's why I say I'm a critic, for goddamn sure. I know you're a critic. But everybody's a critic. But, the, but I'm also a realist, too. 
sometimes you got to see the shit before it's happening. I said last year, I, I and I, I said it last year at the beginning of the season. I said until somebody in the AFC proves that they can beat the Patriots at uh, be, or do better than them, um, a top tier team, the Texans, uh, the Chiefs. I don't give a fuck about a team that's not making it to the fucking playoffs. I'm talking about a top tier fucking team. That until somebody comes up and steps up, that the Patriots are always going to be my de facto AFC champions. I can't. I don't. There's nobody else I can put in that position. I thought the Browns were going to do it. They got OG stomped out three times this year. Once by my San Francisco 49ers. Shout out San Francisco. Okay. Um, what do you think is going to happen if Cleveland plays in New England? What do you think is going to happen if Baker Mayfield uh, gets schemed out schemed by Bill Belichick? What the fuck you think is going to happen? I mean, I, I, I kind of feel sorry for Baker at this point because he, that game is coming up in about two or three weeks here. Um, that's not going to be good. No, and, and and the worst part about it is they couldn't be more desperate for a win. That's the bad part about it. The worst, the the, the whole thing is that I thought they were going to split the series with Baltimore. So already that puts them at five games lost this year, which puts us. They dominated Baltimore the first game. Yeah, but I said, but it's division games. You know how them fucking division games are. We didn't. Ex- I mean, I expect the Buffalo to have kept it tight against New England, but I expect them to keep it that tight. Okay. Um, I mean, division games are always something else. You can throw all the stats and all the predictions and all that other shit out the window. I mean, unless it's the AFC East, then we already know what's up. Like if it's the Dolphins or the Jets, we already know what exactly to expect, okay? But I actually have an interesting question for you about the Jets later on in this show. So <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. But do, do something that you make that you told me to make sure I keep make you keep your word on. <laughs> Oh, I know exactly what it is. Oh, boy. Uh. But anyway, the New England Patriots out there, they showed what we all know. Their defense is dominant. And then they unveiled the new nickname from Kyle Van Oy, as he calls them the boogeyman. They are the, what they said. He said they are the one team that they would not want to meet in a dark alley. I wouldn't. They play everything well. They play the front three well. They play the, the, the back four well. They play the other back four well. Hell, when they're in a nickel, they play the back five well. When they're in a the goddamn dime, they play the back six well. <laughs> and also, what people also need to think about this Thursday night game, it was a short week. Patrick Chung was out. Philip Dorsett was out. Josh Gordon got hurt in the first half. But we're acting like there was a bad game. I mean, the that's only – That's how the media is acting. Oh, the special teams and the Patriots defense have to save Tom Brady. The dude had 400 yards of total offense. He had two rushing touchdowns. What I'm saying. Hey. No, if, if, I mean, what if you didn't have a quarterback that was willing to do a, a quarterback dive willingly and put his body on the line? What if you would have had that? What I mean, what then? What, you, have it's a, not- you have a 42-year-old quarterback saying, fuck it, I'm going up the middle myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, but we got we have all right. So we got a bunch of stuff we got to get off the chest, uh, off off the deck. Shout out to the New England Patriots for that win. Um, a wonderful, wonderful game, six and zero. Oh, um, to me, it was a definitive Bill Belichick game where if something doesn't work, you make it work. You find a way to make it work, and that's what they did. That, I mean. Tom Brady should have had two touchdowns, but they uh, I think it got called back. One, one, got, one was called short, which was correct, and then yeah. the other one was called back. He would have had two touchdowns. Uh, and the other one, I guess that he missed Edelman going the wrong way. Yeah, which is – He threw it one place, Edelman went the other, and it was picked off. That's all. It it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And, you know, so he ran it in himself. What? what else, like I said, I don't know what else you want to do. I still would not be one to be the team to ask the Patriots on their schedule. Straight out. Because – even if, let's say, Tom Brady was on a snide, okay, you still have the most scoringest defense in the NFL this season. So this was the stat that I found hilarious. The Patriots' defense and special teams have scored mm-hmm. six touchdowns on the season, okay? Mm-hmm. Six. Mm-hmm. That is more than the Jets and the Dolphins combined. Yep. Had the team. Yep. They have 28 sacks. Last year they had a total of 30. Yeah, they, hey, they actually, they actually have, if you put it into perspective, they have more touchdowns offensively than Kyler Murray. 
All right, so congrats on the Patriots. My Patriots going 6-0 and to start the season for yep. the sixth time under Coach Belichick. And let's go ahead and get into week six. Let's we are going to start things off with one of the hottest teams in the NFL, the Carolina Panthers at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Carolina Panthers at the Buccaneers. They got – uh, your man's uh, what's his name? Um, I was Kyle, uh, Allen. Kyle Allen riding out on these fools. Uh, he came in week two, week two, I remember week two, week two and a half, week two and a half. Kyle Allen came in and made his team his own ever and since he hasn't, he hasn't lost yet. <laughs> nope, not at all. And, and, and you know, it's crazy because Kyle Allen played. Last, uh, last the last two games of uh the season last year, he, and he, let, right now he is five and zero as a starting quarterback. Yep, that is crazy, right? Um, and we just talked about this on Wednesday show that the, it seems to be that the writing's on the wall for Cam Newton, um, which I understand at this point. I mean, reality is is that the the Carolina Panthers planned on the off season to play without Cam Newton. In case the shoulder problem was was an issue, and now that's not even the case. It's this whole, um, it's homeboy it's wearing too many high, homeboy wearing too many high heels. He keeps extending his foot too much. I'm telling you, there are all these damn foot problems. G, not what I mean. And so now, I mean, I I I, I like the game in itself, okay? Because Tampa Bay has their backs against the wall. They lose another game, they're going to be too far behind. They're two and three right now, if I remember correctly, because they have the, the loss against the Niners. They lost somewhere in the middle of the season, and then they have the loss they just recently did when I thought they were going to win, and that yep. didn't happen. The Giants game. Um, I this Their back's against the wall, and it's a division game. Is Carolina at home or is Tampa Bay at home? Tampa Bay is at home. <sighs> So the last game Tampa Bay won was at home. They did lose. Um, they did lose to the uh, Niners at home, but they haven't lost the game at home since, which is all right. Uh, but this one is a London game, ain't it? I believe it I is. Think, I think it's the London game. So it's not even necessarily a home-home game. But Tampa Bay has played in the London game before. They played in the London game last year. If I remember correctly, and that was the game that Jameis Winston, that was like the first win of Jameis Winston after uh um coming back from that that suspension, and he lost like a couple, and then they he finally came back. So I'm gonna attribute to the inexperience of Kyle Allen in playing in London because it takes a little bit of getting used to playing in London. Um, and I don't want to bet against Carolina in this one. Something tells me, because this is a game Tampa Bay is should lose. And I have that feeling that Tampa Bay is just like Tennessee, which is just like Buffalo. I, I'm gonna get I'm a bet on Tampa Bay on this one. I'm a All I'm right. a daring man. And that's you know, and those and that's Christian McCaffrey aside, the, the best. Pound for pound running back in the NFL today. Point blank, period. I still have to go with Tampa Bay because if I don't, if they don't, then it's the end of their season. Uh, the, the back's against the wall because there's no way they're going to get out of the hole. They got some tough teams. They still got a Seattle. They still got a, a Rams game this, this year. Um, and who knows? Kyler Murray just might do a pop up on them or some shit. Who fucking knows? Just saying. So. As my boy over there said, Tampa Bay has played London before. Carolina played in London two years ago, but that was a Cam Newton team. Um, I think Christian McCaffrey right now is one of the best players in the NFL. And Kyle Allen is not Cam Newton because, and what, and that's a good thing because he's actually letting Christian McCaffrey do what Christian McCaffrey does. So I have a question for you real quick. And I've been stewing on this for a while, right? Ever since we last talked. Do you think that Cam Newton's inability to get the ball to Christian McCaffrey the the right way is less game plan and more Cam Newton's ego? 
Because Cam I, Newton. You, you just said a very interesting word there. You said inability. I don't think it's inability. I think it's unwillingness. And that's what I'm saying. I think that his ego, because Cam Newton is the, up until they drafted Christian McCaffrey, and up even up until last year, was the unabashed, undisputed face of the Carolina Panthers. Right? He was a league MVP. There's a reason. So they asked, Cam Newton asked for help, well, you know, at this point with the running back, because no D'Angelo Williams, no Jonathan Stewart. Uh, Mike Tolbert didn't work out. Whatever running backs they try to throw at him didn't work out. We get a running back that is the Swiss Army knife. I'm telling you, it's Bill Belichick's wet dream of a running back. Um, and they get this guy, and they draft him. But he's become more of a folk hero in Carolina just because of the myth and the mystique of, of Christian McCaffrey, even more so than Cam Newton, because Christian McCaffrey's just a goddamn great football player. Hands down. Um, and Cam Newton is – it's he's, I think he's still a great quarterback, but I think the lack of getting it to Christian McCaffrey because he doesn't want to has – what really has been set this franchise back the last two years. No, and that's what it is. Like I said, it's not inability. It's unwillingness. He was unwilling to pass the torch to the man that is going to be the future of the Carolina Panthers. Because Cam Newton does not want to step aside. No, and he doesn't, which is going to be a shame. Because I mean, you think they'll give the you, you think they'll give the starting back to Cam Newton after all the, the way that they're going? Hell no. No, if, especially if Carolina beats Tampa Bay this week, that yeah. makes Carolina two and one in the division. Yep. I don't think Cam Newton sees the field again this year as the Carolina Panther. Which then becomes interesting because we're in week six. We got three weeks, three and a half weeks to the to the trade deadline. I mean, I don't think they'll do a trade per se, not yet. But it is intriguing because maybe Carolina makes a playoff push and they trade a Cam Newton for somebody to a team. You know what I'm saying? A team that maybe needs a number one that'll invest in a veteran. Um, I don't know what team that would be, uh, but. That, that, I mean, Cam but, Newton and Le'Veon Bell are going to be, are to, Cam Newton and Le'Veon Bell are going to unite in New York. That would be interesting, especially if they don't think that your boy is the future. Um, what a, I have an interest. Somebody told me a little interesting little tidbit, especially with what happened with Mason Rudolph uh, with the Steelers. What if a little a little Pittsburgh home cook and a trade to Pittsburgh because. Ben Roethlisberger is towards the end of his career. He's he's been one to say that um, that that he's gonna that he's gonna he was supposed to retire two years ago, right? And he just all of a sudden came back because Tom Brady came back, okay? Um, and then Tom Brady said, "I'm playing for four more years." And Ben Roethlisberger said, "I'm playing for four more years too." But everybody forgets that. Um, that that uh, Ben Roethlisberger had Tommy John surgery. Phil, you're familiar with Tommy John surgery. You had you had a famous pitcher, Kurt Schilling, on your Philadelphia Phillies. Um, he had Tommy John. He was out for two years. Mm -hmm. Two years. It's not. It's uh, it, it, he's a quarterback for God's sakes. He pitches. He throws the ball just like a pitcher. So you would assume that being off for one year isn't going to be good enough. Um, you think the well, like, with, okay. Pitchers don't get hit ninety percent of the game. I either. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> On top of that, I mean, I mean, <laughs> I mean, any anything else? I mean, you know, <laughs> that's kind of the big thing. Like, well, okay, the only the only comparison you can make from a quarterback to a pitcher is arm motion. Anything else is out the. So do you think that with this year, with their because we've seen what happened, they they basically gave Ben Roethlisberger the um the, the whole show, the whole fucking show, and he had Tommy John surgery out for the year, might be out till next year. The Steelers, are they really gonna ride with Mason Rudolph for well, the next there's a couple year? of there's a couple of flaws in that sinking of Cam Newton going to Pittsburgh. And one of those flaws is 
Pittsburgh has nothing Carolina wants. True. But you know they can you know Carolina can cut Cam Newton after this year and not owe him a dime. They already paid off his guaranteed money up front. I understand that. But are you really going to and also in Carolina you have to think? All right. Kyle Allen's here, he's having a great job. He's, he's having a great time. The offense is fluid. The team is winning. This, that, and the other. But what happens when the inexperience eventually and realistically kicks in because you know it will? But at one point, does it kick in? We're talking about a Norv Turner offense, the same offense Philip Rivers thrived in for so many fucking years. Um, well, I don't think it kicks in this week. I got the Carolina Panthers <laughs> eating the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. What a nice segue. See, look at that. <laughs> All right, so next up we have the Philadelphia Eagles at the Minnesota Vikings, and they're still without Stephon Diggs. Whew, yeah, they are trying. I told you, we always said three weeks until the trade deadline. Trades got to get done, buddy. And, trades, and, they try. For some reason, Stephon Diggs is just following every single New England Patriot and commenting, liking all their stuff. This deal gets done. Let me tell you something, okay? <laughs> Um, <laughs> it's all bad. That's just all bad. Now that I think about it, I'm like, damn. Um, and especially I, because Cincinnati is actually thinking about trading AJ Green in New England. Well, there's a lot of things on the table in New England because look at this. Um, you could feasibly see if this Stefan Diggs thing is real, right? And it seems to me that it is. You could feasibly see a trade with Stephon, where Stephon Diggs and AJ Green end up in New England, and somehow, some way, you still have to deal with Josh Gordon, Julian Edelman, and Nikhil Harry, and the entire defense. Still, Bill Belichick is looking to trade 2027 first round draft picks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? At this, at this fucking point, you know what I'm saying? I'm retiring. I'm retiring in 2025. You can have all our 2026. And 2027 first round is. <laughs> I'm just saying th th that's something that feasibly happened. But the the Vikings have been protecting Stefan Diggs, wrapping him in Saran wrap and storing him for future use. Um, they're doing what the Buccaneers did to Jameis Winston two years ago. Shit, they're doing what the damn bucket Bucks did to Keyshawn Johnson fucking ten years ago. <laughs> Shit. I mean, the last thing, the last thing the NFL and any other team in the NFL want to see is a Tyler Eifert and AJ Green and a Stephon Diggs in New England uniforms. Well, then I hope that Minnesota, that Kirk Cousins go to Stephon Diggs' house and gives him a hug and says, "I'm sorry." Okay, so because that's what it's going to take to get Stephon Diggs back in the fold in Minnesota. Until then, um, they have to play the Eagles. And yes, your boy Thielen is happy. Uh, he's probably. Going to be happy for the next couple weeks because it's not like Philadelphia has the best pass defense in the NFL. Uh, far from it. However, this defense coordinator is highly familiar with the, with the ability or lack thereof of, Phil, of, uh, of uh, Kirk Cousins as, as having to play, you know, play against him two times a year in, uh, in, in when he was in Washington. So... <laughs> um. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, Minnesota. This just isn't your week. Um, this is the lack of Stefan Diggs is going to catch up to them this week. To me, uh, Dalvin Cook is still going to probably go for 150, 160 because Philadelphia still can't stop the run. But uh, everybody forgets that Carson Wentz, up until this point, is a top five quarterback this season. I don't know how the fuck that happened, but it happened. Carson Wentz is in there, I, and, and as I don't, I, I've seen Philadelphia Eagles games. I don't know how that even is physically possible, but somebody told me that that's the truth. I looked up the stats; it is true. Um, I mean, I, I I don't have any good things to say about the Philadelphia Eagles outside of Carson Wentz and their middling pass defense. But again, it's Kirk Cousins; he can make a middling pass defense look like the New England Patriots. So. I have the Eagles in this game. Um, 
I am, going, I am going with the home cooking in this game. <laughs> oh, Lord. I am going to go with the Minnesota Vikings. I think Dalvin Cook and Adam Seeland are going to be a little bit too much for that not-so-vaunted Eagles defense to handle. And, but, has nobody, and has nobody realized that J.J. Ajayi still has no job? Yes. You know who else realized that J.J. Ajayi doesn't have a job? J.J. Ajayi. That's who. That's <laughs> It's like Philadelphia blamed him for not for them not making the playoffs last year. No, no, it wasn't his fault. It was the fact. I mean, Philadelphia did make the playoffs, but the fact of the matter is, is that they really needed a running back to continue in the playoffs under the Nick Foles era, and it didn't happen. All right. So next up, we have Tank Bowl Game Two. Tank Bowl Game. Last week we had the Bengals and the Cardinals. This week. We have the Washington Redskins at the Miami Dolphins. Woo! If this isn't the perfect game to start Dwayne Haskins in and to figure out what the fuck you got in your quarterback, this is it. Um, I'm not sure if they are. I, let me look at the recent news. I'm hoping and I'm praying that they've really decided to start Dwayne Haskins. Let me see if there's any recent uh, news on that front. Um, I I still don't see nothing regarding that. Uh, I don't. Sadly, I don't. Let me see. Nothing. Nothing. I, I clicked on the game. They're just like, yeah, it's going to be horrible for us. Um, <laughs> Cole, McCoy, Cole McCoy is starting a quarterback for the Washington Redskins. <sighs> <sighs> It is not Cole McCoy's fault. No. All right. So I, I need – the reason why I'm uh, – I need to kind of express this. Because not a lot of people know what I'm what I'm about to say, okay? So Cole McCoy tore his knee up at the end of last season when shit went completely wrong and Alex and Smith – I think, in a hospital room. Yeah, I mean, I think it was like three weeks before the end of the two weeks before the end of the season, three weeks, Colt McCoy shredded his knee. Colt McCoy wasn't expected to be back till November, December, if it mattered. Oh, you you're, missing me. you're missing something in the statement. They had to re-break Colt McCoy's leg because it healed wrong. Oh, yes, yes. There's that little part that we got. He, he wasn't even supposed to be – technically, he wasn't supposed to be here this year. He was supposed to be out, like I said, at the earliest November. Uh, worst case scenario, out for the whole year, just like Alex Smith. You tell me what? How desperate Jay Gruden was to bring back Colt McCoy on the injury report two weeks ago. Colt McCoy was listed as doubtful, upgraded from out, and he still somehow fucking played. You know why? You know why? Because the much blind owner of the Washington Redskins told Jay Gruden, your ass better not sacrifice Dwayne Haskins to the Patriots. Well, I, you might as well just left in case fucking Keenum. You know, you, you know, I mean, and he's injured. That's the fucked up part about it, right? So here's the thing, right? So here's the whole thing about the whole case Keenum shit. Case Keenum thrives when he has a shitload of talent around him. Okay, like good running backs, good receivers. He's a game manager. Okay, he's Alex Smith light without the without the legs. Okay, which isn't a good thing anyway. Oh, in this case, well, but yeah, because Alex Smith don't have any legs anymore. <laughs> I, was, I knew you were gonna fucking say that. So that's why I have to get out my statement. But <laughs> <laughs> but 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 I'm just saying. So. When they got Case Keenum, they knew exactly who Case Keenum was. Because in Denver, when he had no talent, he was putting up 350 yards a game but no touchdowns. Yeah, 200 yards receiving by Emmanuel Sanders every week. No touchdowns. 150 to, to, the, to the tight ends, no touchdowns. They give it to the running back for 50, 60 yards a game, no fucking touchdowns. That's right. That is Case Keenum because he had no fucking talent. Because 
But contrary to popular belief, Emmanuel Sanders is not a top 10 wide receiver. But I digress. Okay. <laughs> he, will, he will be if he goes to the Patriots. Oh God, that 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 should have happened. But I, I saw that on Facebook today. <laughs> what Emmanuel Sanders to the Patriots? Oh Lord. Yeah, Everybody said, Bill Belichick has also contacted the Broncos about Emmanuel Sanders. They need because the Patriots need fucking receivers. If somebody gives Tom Brady a fucking wide receiver, it's over. That's it. Just wrap it up. Um, so Case Keenum, when they signed him to Washington, they knew exactly what they were getting. They they got absolutely no talent at all. Vern, uh, if Vernon Davis and Adrian Peterson are your two best players after Case Keenum in 2019, it's a fucking problem. We're not talking about 2011. We're not even talking about 2015. If Adrian Peterson and Vernon Davis are your two best players in 2019, it's – and this is why Washington will never be shit. And that's that's simply the way you it is. What? You know what? Based on your argument right there, I am picking the Washington Redskins to beat the Dolphins. And with that said, I'm also picking the Washington Redskins to beat the Dolphins. <laughs> oh, you thought, didn't you? Nigga, you thought, huh? <laughs> oh. You know why? Because just as bad as the Washington Redskins are, it's just as 10 times worse as the goddamn Miami Dolphins. There is no saving Miami. Their their best loss was 20 points. This I want you to say their best loss was 20 points. No, there's there's no excuse for the Miami Dolphins this year. They're fielding a a a, 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 a Division One AA college team out there in Miami. Not even a, not even a one A school. A fucking one AA fucking. They're, 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 they they didn't put out their uh, Northwestern East Carolina State University out in the field. That's the product that you're getting in Miami, folks. Oh, you thought, nigga. Because <laughs> I think Adrian Peterson with three bad knees is still better than anything that the defense in Miami can throw at him. You know, you know what's the perfect way to talk about this game is? What? South Carolina beat number three Georgia today. Oh yeah, I heard about that. Oh, oh, it's been a bad sports sports week week in Georgia. Uh, At the, the Atlanta Falcons and runs dropped on them in the first inning. South only- Carolina beat your number three ranked football team, and don't forget, it's almost the anniversary of twenty eight to three. Uh, the only, the only, uh, the only good thing that has happened. In uh in a, in Georgia this year is Major League Soccer and nobody in Georgia gives a fuck about soccer. So there's that, ladies and gentlemen. Why, they, why the fuck are they kicking the ball? We're not throwing it. <laughs> Shout out to the Thrashers, by the way. <laughs> M- uh, MLS champs. Um, y'all need y'all need a hockey team. Anyway. Anyway, moving on, we have. A team coming off of a career performance by their quarterback against a team whose defense is trash and lost to a subpar team last week. We have the Houston Texans at the Kansas City Chiefs. Who? The worst part about this whole this whole game right here is that Indianapolis's defense wasn't even really that good. They just schemed uh, the Chiefs very fucking well. And Patrick Mahomes is playing hurt. Yes. So now they're going against a team that actually has a good defense and is going to scheme them well. And they have one man back there who's going to cause a ruckus. And that man goes by the name of J.J. Watt. Yes. James Jehoshaphat Watt. It's not even his real name. I'll just 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 make it up a name at this point. Uh- <laughs> James Jehoshaphat. Jehos- yes, James Jehoshaphat Watt. The third. All right, it works. <laughs> Does so, that mean his brother TJ is named Tyrone Jehoshaphat Watt? Yeah, Tyrone Jehoshaphat Watt. 
<laughs> Ty, no, Tiberius Jehoshaphat what? Hey, <laughs> Right. Oh, wow. so, so last week Deshaun Watson played like a man on fire, literally last week. <laughs> yeah, literally and figuratively. Uh, <laughs> and his best career game as a pro. Yes. Uh, who who was it again? And, and the, funny, the funniest part about it is the best wide receiver in the NFL was not even his number one target all game because he didn't even have a touchdown. That's right. What does that do, Fuller? Yeah, Will Fuller had 265 yards and three touchdowns. Oh, boy. That's right. Um, And that's the scary thing is that you took Deshaun Watson out of the entire game. And guess what? Deshaun Watson, I mean, you took, yeah, DeAndre Hopkins out of the game. Deshaun Watson said, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, and fuck you too. Uh, I'm just going to say it now before you go off on a tangent. I'm picking the Texans this week. Oh, hey, hey. Um, it's just Patrick Mahomes, Lashawn McCoy, and the still maligned defense of the perennially maligned defense of the uh, of the Kansas City Chiefs. Is this the worst defense that the Kansas City? I mean, that a, uh, that a Andy Reid coach team has ever had? No, it's not. No, not at all. The worst defense the Andy Reid coach team ever had was a team. The Philadelphia team with D-Mac and T.O. that made it to the Super Bowl against the Patriots. That was the worst Andy Reid defense he's ever had. Oh, yeah, that was a bad team. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Well, then, also, uh, well, you could probably throw in one of the one of the one year, uh, the first year Michael Vick team that apparently Michael Vick always had to come from behind and win games for him. Remember those times that fucking he came back, was it 28 nothing? No, 31 nothing, 31 3 against the Giants. Remember that game? Michael Vick came in mm-hmm. and, and brought him, uh, well, 1 35, 30, I mean, 38 31. So, you want to know what the funniest thing about that Chiefs Colts game was? What? So, when Bill Belichick gets rid of people, he knows they're at the end of their career, correct? Yeah. When Andy Reid gets rid of people, they're still good. And we saw that last week with Justin Houston, who was all over Patrick Mahomes. Oh yeah, I mean, that management is. <laughs> Chiefs management has never been good. I mean, they suspended, then unsuspended, then resuspended, then unsuspended, and then let go of a of of, of a Kareem Hunt, all in a all in a two week. Right, they, they suspended, then unsuspended, then suspended, then unsuspended, and then got his collarbone broken. Tyreek Hill. That's right. We've never accused we never accused the Chiefs of being good managers. Okay, we never and you never uh, choose the Chiefs. Yeah, you never choose the Chiefs. Uh, accuse the Chiefs of not giving second chances unless you have cancer. Uh, ooh, <laughs> ooh, that was a Ric Flair low blow with style too. Ooh. Ooh. All right, so I'm yeah I'm going with the and Barry, I still like. Yeah, we still love you. Much love, sir. I'm, I'm going with the uh, the Texans in this game. Uh, the writing's on the wall for this Kansas City uh, thing. Just like most Andy Reid teams when they have great quarterbacks, the writing's on the wall. Uh, I mean, the Texans have the person better personnel than the than the Colts. There should be no reason why they don't win this game. You know, you know what the writing on the wall for the Chiefs says? What? You will not beat the Patriots. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I mean, this is what it is. Shit. Fuck it. Oh. So next up, we have a team who looks like they're going to be getting their old quarterback back. He was out there throwing passes with no cast on his thumb. At Gardner Minshew lost his first game last week. We have the Teddy Bridgewater playing at the top of his game, Saints. At the Jacksonville Jaguars. Is Teddy B going to be looking over his shoulder at a resurgent Drew Brees who's on his way back? No, not at all. Um, Teddy Bridgewater knew his role. He he uh, he knew what was what was up. Um, he knew that he was going to come in for five, six, four to six games, do his job. That's what they paid him the bucks for, right? No, I, I, know- said that, I said that for trash. I already know oh. that Teddy Bridgewater knows that yeah. this is his team when Brees retires. 
Yeah. Oh, it's, it's very easy. The the challenge, though, I think is going to be if Drew Brees comes back and doesn't perform at a high level like he's supposed to because then you're going to hear the rumblings. I don't want to hear the rumblings. I know for sure that Drew Brees is this team's unabashed leader. Hands down. Um, so, but unlike Flacco, unlike Flacco, Drew Brees actually helps Teddy Bridgewater. Well, yeah, exactly. Um, I think I don't think there's anybody on this team that doesn't want uh, Drew Brees there. I don't even think there's a fan out there that doesn't want Drew Brees back because they know exactly what Drew Brees brings to the table. Uh, they're going against a Jacksonville team that has found Leonard Fournette somewhere hanging out a bar and, and brought his ass back and said, hey, guy, let's play football. And that's exactly that was, what Leonard Fournette has done. That was our guard. That was all guard in Michigan. You know, he was, you know, he was taking on Leonard Fournette's feet at the bar. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, as much as I like Jacksonville, I think that New Orleans is too much right now, especially if, if Jalen Ramsey is not playing this week, which I, my understanding is that based off the reports, he's not playing this week. Uh, reports he's not playing the rest of this year. <laughs> ew, that's 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 lovely. Because um, he, he still wants to be traded, and Jacksonville's like, no, no, no. <laughs> well, if we're gonna trade you, we're not gonna make you unhealthy, sir. Sorry, sorry, buddy, guy. We actually want stuff in return. We are not trading you to the Patriots for a 2029 fifth round draft pick. No. <laughs> 2029 ninth round draft pick and shit. Wait, 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 wait a minute after they signed the deal. Nope, no take backsies. Could you imagine Jalen Ramsey with that Patriots backfield? Man, listen. If all said and done, this nigga, this is gonna be insane. I'm really I'm just really surprised that Kansas City was, was willing to give up the ghost for Jalen Ramsey. They didn't pull the trigger. Jack, like I said, Jackson was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you heard what Kansas City offered. Two first round draft picks in the net in the in the in the twenty twenty draft twenty twenty draft in the twenty twenty two draft. Um and Baltimore, they offered, Baltimore offered three first round draft picks. <laughs> yep. Um the Eagles offered offered two they offered two picks. Um also I think a receiver, one of their one of the receivers. Well that they offered Aguilar before his hands turned into stone. Um <laughs> we know no, no, Jacksonville, Jackson, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Are waiting for that sweet, sweet call saying, I'll give you a fourth and a fifth. Just go ahead and hand over Jalen. <laughs> fourth and a fifth. No, not the fourth and fifth pick, a fourth round and a fifth round. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You skip That's all those Bell Trick does things. Don't skip skip all those first round offers. Fuck it. Take this fourth and this fifth because it's the right thing to do for football reasons. <laughs> oh. Down the line, down the line, Jackson was like, <laughs> "Look at that! Like they, have, like they have the numbers and shit passing by the face and shit. Like, wait a minute, Jacksonville, sit, Jacksonville sitting there looking like Al Davis when he traded to, when he traded Randy Moss to the Patriots, and then the Patriots were undefeated." Or better yet, fucking when uh, <laughs> what when when Minnesota traded for Herschel Walker? That's what this shit's gonna be like. Or, or when the San Diego Chargers said Junior Seau and Rodney Harrison were at the end of their careers before they went to New England. Yes, they were at the the tail end of their careers. The tail end of their careers. Poor, poor people listening on the podcast are going to be like, what the fuck are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> Just know we're making mathematical question phases, faces, okay? That's what we're doing. Just pull up a math, mathematical, math, pull up a math equation GIF, and then you'll understand. Just look it up, and you'll find it, and you'll understand. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we, we're, we're on the Jags, as good as Gardner Minshew is, um... Saints are going to be too much for him at this juncture. Juncture, Saints are going to be way too much. Uh, even I got, at, I got the Saints also. I don't think Jacksonville 
They're very good against in pass defense. They're just not that good in run defense. No. Alvin Kamara is going to have a field day. Yeah, and I think a lack of a really good scheme to put because because keep in mind they got Nick Foles, and then they, they you know and they but didn't install a vertical passing attack because they installed a passing attack based off the skill set of Nick Foles. They didn't base it off of Gardner Minshew. Gardner Minshew was a spread uh, offense quarterback, and Gardner Minshew is doing his goddamn best. But the, but Jacksonville just not simply just not does not have the talent. But I think personally next year. That Gardner Minshew is gonna himself is gonna be able to get some really good receivers in Jacksonville because I think people are gonna want to play out, outside of Tom. To me, outside of Tom Brady and Drew Brees, um, I think that Jacksonville, especially if you're a receiver, is a good place for you to want to go to be a receiver. Yeah, because Gardner Minshew is making these young receivers look like footballers right now. Exactly, exactly. I mean, imagine you're a receiver. Imagine a guy like uh, Tyreek Hill. Um, I'm like, yeah, you got Patrick Mahomes, but shit, man. Imagine having to play in Florida eight eight times a year. Just saying. So we both got the Saints in this game. Next up, we have <laughs> the Seattle Seahawks at the Cleveland Browns. The Cleveland Browns, man. They... Did you hear about the bold prediction this week? Before we go into the thing, I want I want to give you not my bold prediction, but. Um, apparently across the board in ESPN and on Fox, their bold prediction is that Cleveland gets back on track and beats the Seattle Seahawks this week. My biggest concern with the Browns right now is the fact that the Tuesday following Monday, when the Browns got obliterated by the San Francisco 49ers, they started fielding trade offers for Odell Beckham. <sighs> This is true. Um, we all know that Odell Beckham does not do well with negativity. I know. I just th I think that the this is the problem. Okay. So we talked we talked about this earlier in the season, and we even talked about this when we were doing our preview. The only concern that I had was. Odell Beckham and uh, Baker Mayfield not getting the time around the preseason in order for themselves to gel. And Odell they Beckham was hurt during the whole preseason. Yeah, but they didn't do it. They, it's not like they went to the offseason. Matter of fact, oh, there's Odell Beckham went catching passes with Colin Kaepernick in the offseason. You didn't go catching passes with Baker Mayfield, you know, the actual quarterback that you play for or play with. Yeah. No, not at all. That's not important. Me, me and my kicking net wife are going to go hang out with Colin. And there's your one per video, goddammit. <laughs> I mean, it's it's time to build chemistry, especially when you're new. When uh, when T when To got to Dallas and Drew Bledsoe got hurt, uh, To spent week after week working out with Tony Romo, which is why he had the emotional outbursts. It's my quarterback, man. And my quarterback. In my quarterback, man. Nah, but you know what I mean. Um, it's just saying, like you got this is shit that you got to do if you're trying to get build. A, if you're trying to win and you're trying to win with a quarterback as a receiver, you have to build a rapport with this dude. The fact that um, the, the, your boy Humphrey from uh, from the Ravens, who's like not like the best quarterback corner in the NFL, not even like a top thirty corner in the NFL, completely shut Odell Beckham out of a game is laughable at best. I mean, you're supposed to be elite number one wide receiver. What offensive scheme, one, has you being completely taken out of a game by a quarter, corner, and two, you get so angry that you're not talking to your quarterback to try and figure out how to get this shit resolved. Um, and if, but, the, but somebody knows something that I don't know, apparently, or something that we don't know, and they're picking Cleveland to beat Seattle this week. I'm not. I'm picking the Seahawks. <sighs> Russell I, Wilson, Russell Wilson is playing the best football of his career. Oh, no doubt, no doubt about it. But I only have one concern with uh with with the Seattle Seahawks. You know what my concern, huh? Their defense, their run defense specifically. Forget the forget the passing defense. Like, I think their passing defense is middle of the road. Yes, I, know about, Nick, I know Nick Chubb is going to go for a buck fifty in this game. I know that. But are they going to be – I think they're going to have to run the offense through Nick Chubb 
Forget running the offense through Baker Mayfield. Forget running the offense through Nick Chubb. I mean, I mean not Nick Chubb, but we get running through, through Odell Beckham. Forget even running it through Javar, Jarvis Landry. You have to run it, when you're facing a, a, like the 20th or 25th run defense in the NFL. You have to run the goddamn football, and you have to keep the ball out of Russell Wilson's hands. The only way to keep it out of Russell Wilson's hands is to keep him off the field. And you know the only way to keep him off the field? Run the goddamn football. That's the only way you're going to have to do it. Um, Nick Chubb is great. It's phenomenal. He's not getting a lot of the credit that he deserves, actually, because of the whole Baker Mayfield drama um, and the Odell Beckham drama. I, I'm not one. I, I'll tell you what. I'm going to go with Seattle. I don't like it, but I'm going to go with Seattle. Now, apparently... I want to beat these ESPN fuckers that think they know more than anybody else. So I'm going to go with Seattle at this point. All right. Next up, we have a game that's taking place in the AFC North. We have the 0-5 Cincinnati Bungles at the Baltimore Ravens. Oh, this this game has a predetermined outcome. Uh <laughs> If there is a script for a game, this is it's it. I think Lamar Jackson finally gets back on track. Uh, the Bengals can't stop anything, anybody, or anyone. You got – they lost to the Cardinals, and the, and the Cardinals didn't even score – I don't even think they scored a passing touchdown last nope. week. Kyler Murray had two rushing touchdowns. And they got blown out. They got blown the fuck out. No, you. This, this is gonna look just as bad as that Miami game, like fifty-five to something. So, um, so I'm just gonna say this. Hello, '90s. The Bengals are back. God damn! Are you saying that Andy Dalton's a boomer of sizing and trade his ass to the Jets too? Because <laughs> they need a fucking quarterback anyway. <laughs> This is the Icky Woods Cincinnati Bengals. Oh, God. What, 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 one in 15 three years in a row. <laughs> with the best running back in the NFL. That's <laughs> uh, so, so we're agreeing that the, the Ravens, right? I mean, that's uh, – oh, okay. Just making sure. Oh, okay. All right, good, good. All right. So next up, I'm actually in the middle of this game right now. Due to an injury to a certain player on a certain team. But also, Todd Gurley has been listed as being out in this game. We got the 49ers at the Rams. The juice in 49ers in San Francisco is hurt. And we've seen in that Cleveland game that affects their rushing attack very badly. It does. And I'm not, and I, I'll be the first one to tell you that I'm a little bit worried about this game. However, the fact that uh, the Rams have seemingly their defense is not what it used to be. Um, I mean, yes, there's Aaron Donald, uh, but only our right side is affected, not the left side. Um, and Aaron Donald plays that left side. Uh, it's going to be Staley versus Donald all game. That one's going to be a battle from hell. Is Staley back? Yeah, Staley's back. Um, Staley, he came back last week, I believe. The best uh, player on the field is George Kittle. Yeah. Now, the, uh, if anybody knows anything about a Mike Shanahan offense, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Kyle Shanahan offense, it's when you take away what he does best. So when a player gets injured, that's a vital player. Uh, he's The reason why he has Bill Belichick's respect is that he can change things on the fly and make it seem like nothing ever happened. He'll throw a whole new offense on the field, and and you won't even know what the fuck happened. Yeah, unlike that Cleveland game, he actually has time to prepare without juice. That yeah. whole Cleveland game, that whole game was getting the running game going against Cleveland's bad run defense, mm -hmm. and juice making those blocks. And as we've seen, the San Francisco 49ers running backs had a field day in that game until oh, yeah. juice got hurt. Oh yeah, but we able to, we still able to control the clock. The defense made did what they were supposed to do. I think what you're gonna see is akin to the the Super Bowl Atlanta team. 
And when I say the Super Bowl Atlanta team, I mean the speed, right? You're going to get up 28 to 3 and lose? Okay. No, 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 no. Our defense isn't, isn't horrible like Atlanta's was. Um, we actually, oddly enough, here's the funniest part about since we're since we're on the uh, defense, the Patriots and the 49ers have the two best defenses in the NFL. Um, they're both quarterbacked by New England prodigies, a uh, Josh <laughs> that, that that had their best years under Josh McDaniels. Um, and they're both coached by legendary coaches. Um, and Kyle, don't get twisted, Kyle Shanahan is a legendary offensive coordinator who's now a coach. Um who finally got a shot after, what, 15 years as a fucking coach? Uh, I think, in my heart of hearts, I think that the 49ers got this one. And normally, I, I, and, and if it was any, I think if the Rams were at full strength, I might be inclined to take the Rams in L.A. However, we gotta, we're going to see a completely different style of offense hit the field, at least for the next few weeks, while uh, Juice gets hurt. It's going to be a lot of speed. We're going to be playing a lot faster, a lot stronger. I believe the game plan is going to negate any kind of good things that the defense has. And I think our defense is good enough to shut down uh, Jared Goff as we've shut down other quarterbacks previously. If Todd Gurley played, I would have picked the Rams. Yeah, if, if this was Todd Gurley before the injury last year. No, even Todd yeah. Gurley this year, I would pick the Rams. Yeah. The reason I say that is Cooper Cup is enough of a threat for Gurley to have a good game. Because no matter where you line Cooper Cup up on the field, he's going to get you 20, 30 yards. True. But I'm going to go with San Francisco due to the Gurley injury. I think it's going to be a low-scoring defensive game. And as long as Jimmy G doesn't make the mistakes he was making early this season, the 49ers will win this game. No doubt. There you go. All right, next up we have a game between two birds and two one and five teams, the Atlanta Falcons at the Arizona Cardinals. <sighs> Conventional. Oh, another – another, another, Wide receiver the Patriots caught about is Muhammad mm -hmm. Sanu. So. Conventional wisdom would tell you that you should bet on the Arizona not, not Arizona Cards, the, the Atlanta Falcons. Conventional wisdom. You know, the regular type of wisdom. You know, the wisdom that says that Matt Ryan is an elite quarterback, Julio Jones is the best wide receiver in the NFL, and Devontae Freeman is still playing like it's four years ago. Conventional wisdom has now been thrown out the window because hold on, the beef. Hold on, hold on, we have a guest appearance real quick by Steve Austin. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Conventional wisdom has been thrown out the window now. Um, the Atlanta Falcons have one of the worst defenses in the NFL. They're even worse at stopping the run. Um, um, they're bad at stopping the pass too. They can't protect Matt Ryan. I mean. Protecting Matt Ryan means nothing because Arizona has no pass rush whatsoever. Hey, what? Daniel Jones and Terrell Suggs do what they can. God damn it. It's just, it's just bad that they're playing on the same side of the field. <laughs> it's, it's just come now to a point where I don't trust Atlanta anymore. The, mat, the Maddie Meltdown train is in full effect. Oh, oh, yeah. Now, here, here's something for you. If Arizona loses this game, I am willing to bet money that Dan Quinn gets fired this week. You mean if Atlanta loses the game? I mean, no, yeah, but I'm sorry. If, if Atlanta loses this game, I believe that Dan Quinn gets fired. Because well, you should Dan, be Quinn, Dan Quinn, you're going to be hanging out behind Jay Gruden next week. I am picking the Arizona Cardinals to beat the Atlanta Falcons. I am also picking the Arizona Cardinals to beat the Atlanta Falcons. I I want to see somebody get fired, one. But two, um, the Falcons have become a complete shit show. And at some point, we got to throw out the whole fucking team. And I think this They have not been the same since 28 to 3. Nope, have not. They have not made the playoffs since then. Um <laughs> They haven't. I mean, what do you want me to do? 
I mean, I feel bad because I got a lot of friends that are that are Falcons fans, but do I? I, do I? But we gotta be real. This this is the this is it. You, how do you have the best receiver in the NFL? You have a quarterback that's actually performing well, but sucking at the same time. How how does that happen? How do you suck and blow at the same time, Phil? Huh? <laughs> it's physically impossible. Very easily, and I'm going to tell you how. You want to know how? How? By you opening your mouth last week and saying, no matter what I say, I am not picking the Dallas Cowboys again this season. And I want <laughs> you, Phil, Phil, I want you to hold that, to hold me to that. So guess what, Mr. Granger? What? Roosters have come home to roost. <laughs> it's time for you to own that as you are locked in as picking the New York Jets against the Dallas Cowboys this week. And you know what? Your boy is coming back this week, so I'm happy about that. Um, what's his name? Um, God damn it. They're starting quarterback to begin with. Sam Darnold? That's right. He said he was coming back this week. He has no more mono-kissing disease. He said he's ready to play some football. Okay? The Dallas Cowboys, I don't care who they are. Oh. Uh, you gotta excuse me. You gotta excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, while I'm selling myself. <laughs> I'm selling myself all this victory. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, buddy. Have at it. <laughs> this is probably gonna be the greatest win in Jets history if they can pull this off. Okay. The Jets need this. Sam Darnold's gonna come back and go into a house fire. He's gonna be putting up 07 Tom Brady against the Tennessee Titan numbers. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit oh. <laughs> oh my god I gotta cover my nose cause all that shit coming out of your mouth is bullshit <laughs> oh. woo it's, it's, uh, Le'Veon Bell is going to go for 200 plus yards from scrimmage. Okay. This is the definitive Jets game. And they're still going to lose, but I'm still picking the Jets anyway because I am morally obligated to do so. Fuck the Cowboys. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> So I'm just going to say it now. Mr. Black over here didn't look at the upcoming schedule before he made that prediction last week. No. no. <laughs> Fuck the Cowboys. Oh. I, on the other hand, am picking the Cowboys in this game. <laughs> then hold this L, sir. The Jets are going to win or something. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do, right? What? Come Monday, I'm going to video clip this whole thing. Hold that L, sir. The Jets are going to win. And I'm going to play it on loop on Facebook for 24 hours. Just for you, my friend. Just for you. What happens if they do win, though? Then I retire from doing this show. <laughs> I will not hold you to that because I can't hold do the show without you. I will drag your ass out of bed. Oh, I'll drag you out of a fucking grave to do this damn show. So I'm not holding you to that. However, <laughs> okay, okay. If the Jets win this game, I will pick the Jets for the rest of the season. Oh, God, no. Oh, Jesus. Again, even against the Patriots? Yes. I was going to do something as simple as you're going to have to pick against the Cowboys for every rest of the game like I do. No, I'm not going to be that stupid. I will pick the Jets. <laughs> he says he's not going to do be that stupid, but he's going to. <laughs> Whoo. That is how confident I am that the Jets are not going to win this game. No, here you go. I'll even do you one better. If the Jets win, then you have to pick Atlanta for the rest of the season. Okay, okay, okay. Because I don't want to do that to your Patriots. Because, you know, <laughs> Jets ain't going to win, so there's really no threat to it. 
but you're picking the Jets and therefore ruining your schedule. This could literally be the biggest win of the Jets of the Jets uh, year, and they can go win no more games for the rest of the year. Okay, I mean, this is how serious this is. This is it. This is like extinction level of it. Okay, so we're gonna pick on a team like the Atlanta Falcons. Okay, right. if they win, if they win, then you have to pick the Falcons for the rest of the year. Okay, deal. All right, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have a game between a team that whenever I pick them, they lose hmm. against a team that somehow beat the Chargers last week. We have the Tennessee Titans at the Denver Broncos. <laughs> I I looked over the stats of this game last week in Denver. I don't know what the fuck happened. There was nothing. We, we, we even talked about it last week. I even went over the stats like nine times trying to figure exactly what exactly the fuck happened in this game last week and I don't know <laughs> I don't I don't know like I'm, I'm serious like look I, I'll even pull up the stats one more time so you understand this 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 is how serious this Denver game was let me grab the stats real quick hold on okay so Joe Flacco went 14 to 20 for 182. With one touchdown and one interception, okay? One touchdown. One touchdown. Yeah, one touchdown. It wasn't even a touchdown. It was that bad, okay? Yeah. It was a touchdown. Yeah, you are holding in on those Jets, ain't you? Yeah, we got ourselves a touchdown. Yeah, yeah. So no receiver named Emmanuel Sanders. Not even their running back got, got, got the touchdown. Some dude named Sutton. Who is the fuck is Sutton? I think he's a tight end. Yeah, he had four catches, and one of those catches was a touchdown. The Cortland Sutton, he's a wide receiver. He's he was he's from Southern Methodist University, Phil. That's right. Southern oh, yeah. He went from one horse team to another. This this is this is a team full of nothing but uh John Elway budget picks. This is what I'm looking for. This looks I told you from a guy that runs a bunch of car dealerships, this is nothing but a bunch of budget picks. Emmanuel Sanders had one catch for nine yards. There you go. Um, Lindsey had the other touchdown in this game. Phillip Rivers threw two picks. I mean, the Chargers didn't do anything. But the I told, I, I told you in this game, John Elway purchased the Philip Lindsey get good DLC from EA. Apparently, I man, fuck this team. That's a. <laughs> That's why I don't get this shit. Like I, I don't, I don't, I don't. I'm, I'm trying. I'm really trying here to understand how the fuck Denver won this game, and I can't. So fuck this team. So now they're playing who? The Tennessee Titans? Huh? This is the now. Here's here's where the chickens come home to roost. This is the game where the Tennessee Titans not only should win, they should undoubtedly and unabashedly win by multiple touchdowns. Which means they'll probably lose. Yes, exactly. They, they'll probably fucking lose. And I don't I'm not them. willing to take that chance. I'm taking the Titans. Yeah, I am too. I, I'll take the L. I'll hold the L if I have to. But man, Tennessee, you you fuck with me this week. I'm gonna kick. I'm gonna I'm gonna show up in Nashville and beat the shit out of everyone. For real, smacking the shit out of motherfucking Mike Gray. This, this episode of NFL Talk is having a bunch of little clips that are gonna be iconic. And shit goes wrong way. You know that, right? Ooh, at this point, I went six and nine last week. I can't take no chances except for the Jets. I'll take that chance. I ain't got no choice. Because fuck the Cowboys. Anyways. All right. So next up, we have another team who me and James both say, fuck you two. But they're playing the team that lost to the Broncos last week. The Pittsburgh Steelers at the Los Angeles Chargers. Oh, God. Jesus. Let me see. Um, why, why, why? Devlin Hodges is making his first start for Pittsburgh. The Chargers he, are playing. He is the practice squad quarterback that almost beat the Ravens last week. So his, I have a question. So, this game, the, the Niners game, is in L.A. The Chargers game 
is in LA. Mm -hmm. So it's at night. So so here's the deal. The um don't they play in the same stadium still? Sometimes. So how's this gonna go? As soon as the Rams game is over, the ground crew is gonna run out there, restart the field, fill out, fill up the holes in the ground, and re and paint the Chargers logo over the fucking. I don't fucking know. Maybe they're playing this game in San Diego and didn't tell nobody. Oh, I, 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 did they offer two for one tickets to this game? Probably knowing LA because nobody shows up to either team's game, so doesn't really matter whose logo's on the field. I know. I'm just like. The Rams is, I mean, the Rams Stadium isn't built. They're still playing in the Coliseum, right? Yeah. That, I, they're selling two for one tickets to this game. Somehow I feel that I'm picking the Chargers, even though they'll probably lose. But I'm picking the Chargers. If so, if the Chargers, if the Chargers lose to Devlin Hodges, I'm done. With this fucking team. I'm picking the Chargers. But if they lose to Devlin Hodges, Devlin fucking Hodges, I'm done. It's it. I'm I'm done with I I, I even so, I even go so, so, far. If, so if they lose to the Steelers, will the Chargers become the second team this year that you will not pick for the rest of the year? I don't know. It depends on how bad. If they like get OG stomped out, then yes. Because no way you should be getting OG stomped out to Devlin Hodges and the Pittsburgh Steelers. No way. Not at all. Never. Nada. Zero. zero. So if they lose close, then I'll be, I'll get I'll give them rookie luck, okay? Practice squad, squad QB luck. But the, the Chargers should come in here and sack, stomp out, destroy, even while sharing a stadium with the L.A. Rams. That's fucked up. They didn't even get a chance to practice on their own field. That's fucked up. You know why? Because nobody likes the Chargers. <laughs> Not even the Chargers, ladies and gentlemen. That's why they had to go out of San Diego because nobody went to their games to begin with. Here's the messed up part. Here's the messed up part about the, about that shit, right? So nobody went to the games in San Diego and this and uh and they wanted to pay for it, like they didn't want to pay for a new stadium. So the Chargers go to LA. No, you guys can't move. We want you here. Who wants them here? Who? Who? <laughs> Who? Really? They gotta sit their asses down. That's why I hate setting Chargers fans. All seven of you. Anyway. <laughs> One died, there's only six now. Oh, Jesus. Oh, may rest in peace. He had a hard track last week watching them lose to the Broncos. Anyway. Oh. oh. All right. So I guess now we're at the Monday night game. This Monday night game should be a doozy. We have the Detroit Lions who are playing the best football they've played in years at the Green Bay Packers who look like the old Green Bay Packers but look like the new Green Bay Packers. Because Aaron Rodgers kind of throws balls like Dak Prescott here and there. He just launches the ball somewhere, and hopefully one of his teammates catches it. Um, I like this Detroit team. The problem, I if the if Detroit was playing at home, I think I probably would have picked Detroit for this game. I really like what they've done this season. Um, I like the fact that they've balanced Matt Stafford out. They got Carry On Johnson running the football. Um. Marvin Jones is, is is catching the ball really well. The defense has been able to be schemed, but I mean, you have one of the better Patriot defensive coordinators, Matt Patricia, running that de running the the team and the defense. I really want to pick Detroit, but I can't just because Green Bay's at Lambeau. I really can't. Um. Aaron Rodgers has been playing really good. I picked against Green Bay last week, and 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 I and I paid my price for it. I'm not willing to pay that price again. I mean, was, but they're playing outstanding. Green Bay looks like the team poised to take this division since apparently Minnesota doesn't want it. 
Um, in Chicago, or, or should I say Mitch Trubisky, not Chicago, but Mitch Trubisky apparently doesn't want the damn division either. Um, it's Green Bay's to lose at this point. So I'm taking Green Bay in this game. Okay. It is time for Big Sin's Bold Prediction. Oh, boy. Okay. This week's Bold Prediction is brought to you by Matt Patricia in the Detroit Lions defense. Oh, Lord. The Detroit Lions will beat the Green Bay Packers in Green Bay. Who? And as an annulment to our preseason picks this, this year, where we both said the Chicago Bears are going to dominate this division, six weeks into the season, I'm saying, no, the Detroit Lions are going to win this division at the end. Oh, which, which actually is a good segue to an idea that I had that we should do in three weeks. What's that? So you know how we made our predictions. I want us to pull up our season predictions um, in three weeks from now. I want to look at them and see where we're at, where we went wrong, where we fucked up. want to have a little, like, uh, mid midseason review uh, of, where, of what we've done so far and kind of critique ourselves and see if we want to amend anything uh, to those predictions before the season rolls on. Are you up for the challenge, sir? Oh, of course, because the only preseason prediction that we made that is actually coming true is the New England Patriots dominating everybody. Oh, we also agreed with the Niners looking like a decent team. Yeah, but as far as division winners, we, we picked Seattle to win the NFC West. Yeah. But which the only one who's actually doing well is the Patriots. Yeah, which they're a product of consistency, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so, your bold prediction is that Detroit's beating Green Bay. Mm -hmm. I'm rolling with Green Bay in this one on Monday night. Um, and that's that, apparently. That's all the games. Uh, I think it looks good. I think we're in a good place. Um, anything else you want to say before we sign out for the, uh, for the weekend, sir? Nope. All right, well, uh, Big Sin has gameplays on Simple Black Gaming. He's doing his thing. He dropped me a little line saying that he's considering downloading Destiny 2 since it is now free. And he's considering playing a couple games with me to see where the game is at at this point in, in, in life. It is actually downloading right now. Oh, look at that. You love me so much. You love me. You really love me. Oh. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> so we will see you guys on Wednesday night, hopefully. Um, as long as uh Big Sin doesn't have to bust any terrorists between now and then. Um all the way Wednesday is gonna be in full effect. This week, this coming up weekend on Sunday, 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 if Big Sin is down, we have to do an NBA preview. That is going to be uh, in full effect. We already talked about this. We got to go over to the teams. Got to make our predictions on who's going to be a big sin. Is not a basketball fan. He's a Nets fan. Fuck everybody. Fuck your team and fuck everybody else's team. He's a Nets yeah. fan. Brooklyn Nets. He took care of the Lakers two games in a row. Oh yes. Um, that's what happens when you have a team versus three All Stars. Anyways, and Antonio and Anthony Davis got hurt. Yep. Yikes. Well, on that note, catch us on Wednesday uh, to do the, to watch our NFL Fallout show. Or listen and to also that. make sure you catch us on Wednesday where I'll be playing the gif of James Banger saying the Jets are going to win over and over and over and <laughs> over and over again. Uh, I told you we're going to bank on it. I believe probably. Anyways... <laughs> This is your boy, Hollywood J. Black. That's my man, Big Sin, over there. This is the Overtime Sports Show. When until Wednesday, we are out this bitch. Deuces. Once I get the mouse to work, deuces. There we go. <laughs> <laughs>